Hi everyone, this is Mr. P here uh, with lesson 18 of our study of the Black Freedom Struggle where we'll look at the Poor People's Campaign here in 1968. Uh, this will be the last campaign for the purposes of our seminar where we'll evaluate the overall success of nonviolent resistance during the civil rights movement in furthering the cause of black liberation. Uh, after this video, we'll begin a uh, study of Dr. King, Malcolm X, and Ella Baker uh, and, and in seminar, and, and then we'll move into Black Power, the Black Panther Party, and the new African independence movement uh, kind of beyond the civil rights movement, looking at the Black freedom struggle beyond the civil rights movement. Uh, so let's jump in to uh, this campaign. I'll disappear and make this full screen. Uh, so a summary uh, here, uh, the, the poor people's campaign is a response to the widespread poverty. It's a response to the Vietnam War where black and poor people were disproportionately drafted and dying uh, at, because, you know, upper middle class and, and wealthier folks were, were not, and, and particular white folks, um, were disproportionately not drafted uh, and, and not in the most dangerous of situations in Vietnam. Uh, so this is occurring during a time when there's, you know, anti-Vietnam War, anti-war uh, protests. Uh, so the demands of this campaign are a federal intervention to end poverty and an end to the war in Vietnam. Uh, it's important to note that Dr. King's analysis had shifted to a much more intensive focus on economic justice and away from a pure desegregation integrationist approach um, to civil rights and, and had looked at economic justice. He, he talks about how uh, it, it's not going to help black folks if they can get a seat at the lunch counter, if they can't, if they don't have uh, the money to buy a hamburger there. I'm paraphrasing um, uh, that. Uh, and so him and Bayard Rustin had that analysis. Uh, so the Southern Christian Leadership Conference was planning a nonviolent occupation of the National Mall in DC known as Resurrection City. King, however, was assassinated before the campaign began. He was in Memphis, Tennessee, supporting the uh, struggle uh, of uh, uh, supporting the struggle of sanitation workers in Memphis. Uh, again, right, he had shifted uh, starting really in 1965 to a, a look at economic justice, housing, jobs, wages. Uh, so they uh, they demand an economic bill of rights. People were to have meaningful job, living wage, secure and efficient income, access to land, uh, capital to promote business, right? That's important. Uh, and the middle class to have a larger role in government they put in here. Um, so they organize this uh, Resurrection City. You can see uh, right here on the mall, they have lots of uh, tents camped out uh, and people move in. Uh, caravans of poor people arrived in D.C., established Resurrection City. The goal here was to uh, dramatize and make very visible in the richest nation, the capital of the richest nation, the issue of poverty. Uh, people arrived from all over the South and other parts of the North. Uh, and they actually did get a permit from U.S. Senate, so they weren't illegally occupying the land. They had gotten a permit. Uh, and Resurrection City had 7,000 residents at its peak. Uh, and, and, and that's really important. Um, you know, there were, there, there was, this was a, a mass campaign. Uh, and however, it, it began to unravel. Uh, the campaign began to unravel. There were internal disagreements. Uh, Ralph Abernathy... Uh, had removed Bayard Rustin from the cane. Bayard Rustin was not willing to um, take a strong stance against the Vietnam War at the time. Uh, as much as I um, love Bayard Rustin, uh, you can check out one of my previous videos uh, about him. He did not take a strong enough stance against the Vietnam War uh, during this particular period of time. Uh, and and, and the, there was an assassination of Bobby Kennedy, who was seen as an ally, and, and, and this really devastated and, and weakened the morale. Uh, and, and so the, you know, it, people began to leave and eventually the police moved in and forcibly removed all the remaining residents who were trying to stay, even though the permit had expired. So at that point, the occupation had become, you know, uh, uh, unlawful. Uh, and so the, the police were forcibly removed those, those remaining residents. Uh, and, and they weren't able to achieve, you know, their goals. Uh, economic justice continues to be an issue today. And, uh, but however, the, this does indicate, uh, that you know, this campaign inspired other campaigns like it, and today we have a poor people's campaign that was you know inspired by this original vision uh, in 1968. And you can check out the website here. Uh, and and this campaign talks about the importance of ending systemic racism, poverty, and 
and also militarism. I think one of the really important pieces of the Poor People's Campaign for us to understand is the way in which it, it's an interracial effort, uh, right? Desegregation, voting rights, those were primarily right around making sure black folks had those things. Now, those resulted in benefits. The Civil Rights Act and the Voting Rights Act benefited many other communities. Uh, you know, employer discrimination was banned on the basis of, you know, gender and and, and national origin. Many communities benefit from, from uh, the winds of the civil rights movement. The vision here of the Poor People's Campaign was a vision uh, a mass vision for all poor and working people. And, and that's a, a, an enduring legacy uh, that has been maintained by uh, campaigns today. Uh, so that, um, that kind of ends our, our session of the Poor People's Campaign. Uh, and uh, I look forward to our seminar together. Uh, some of you probably be watching this after the seminar, uh, but uh, we'll also uh, be continuing our study of nonviolent resistance, civil rights movement, disagreements over nonviolent resistance as we look at uh, Ella Baker, Dr. King, and Malcolm X's views on Black liberation and their approaches and tactics uh, in our next seminar. Uh, so I look forward to seeing you all there. Peace.